So the first thing I'd like to look at is uh, the number of inputs that we've got available for you on the UMC1. We've got 15 configurable inputs. Go ahead, count them. Um, 14 video inputs and 13 audio inputs. That's a lot of inputs. So the way we set up the input structure is we um, basically have the tuner and then 16 configurable sources. So as we go into the menu later, you'll see our uh, sources labeled source 1 through source 16. And uh, that's the best way to understand how those inputs work is that it's just numbered 1 through 16. They can be named anything and configured to anything you'd like. So let's go ahead and configure our first one, which will be our Blu-ray player. So let's, um, actually I made this sheet for you guys here. You can download this off the website and it's a UMC setup log. So we'll go ahead and just uh, walk down that um, uh, the source list and list our names and um, and then we'll log our inputs uh, and then we can keep this sheet for later use if we ever need to return the unit to any state of uh, configuration. So first we'll take a uh, HDMI cable the Blu-ray player, obviously its best output is HDMI. You're going to get your best uh, video and audio performance using that jack. And let's uh, go ahead and configure the UMC for using the HDMI player on input 1, which should be right there. So the output of the Blu-ray player to input 1 on the HDMI. So let's jump into the menu structure. Um, of the UMC and we're just going to be using uh, these buttons right here on the remote you're going to be using your up down left and right joystick buttons your enter and the menu and return for everything that you're going to see done here so let's go ahead and bring up the menu and we'll uh, go to setup and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to name the input there's the sources that I uh, listed for you earlier you got source 1 through 16 they come pre-configured from the factory so that uh, source 1 is labeled DVD. Obviously that's something you can change. So we'll just uh, cursor over to the left. You see that the DVD is highlighted in yellow or actually a gold color. And so we can actually use the back arrow and erase that. And then we're going to go ahead and spell out Blu-ray. You can hear me ticking away on the metal remote. And you can actually hold the button too and not make so many obnoxious ticking sounds. Almost done. There we are. And as soon as you're done, just hit the enter button. And you can see our cursor returns back over to the left column. So once we're done with that, we've got source one renamed in the input list. Now we're going to return and do some input setup. So here's our list of input criteria. The tuner um, in the input setup lists its uh, station presets and a few other features. Let's drop down to Blu-ray. There's our new name for uh, source one. And uh, the first question we're asked is, would we like it visible or invisible uh, in the input scroll. So as you push the input button, would you like to see this input? Obviously we would because we'd like to see our Blu-ray sources, so we're going to leave that on, uh, on yes. So we drop down to um, audio. Actually, let's drop down to video. I'll show you that here it is already pre-configured for HDMI 1. So it comes from the factory set up to source 1. Uh, we rename DVD to Blu-ray and it is already on HDMI 1. So once we do that, if you come back here to audio, if you notice our input uh, list configuration choices for audio, HDMI is already highlighted. So it's already pre-configured for that. We're going to leave it on that. Input level is something that you'd probably mess with later. Um, it uh, allows you to balance all of your uh, input sources. I guess I've personally seen the most uh, variance from cable boxes. Um, and older Blu-ray, uh, older DVD players. Um, so if you do have a variance of how the audio comes in, you can come here and actually uh, 
um, boost or cut the input level so that as you switch inputs none of them are going to blare. We also have a setting for lip sync. Um, I think if you have a, a version 1.3 uh, Blu-ray player you're really not going to have much uh, issue with that. That's automatically synced through the cable but if you have an older cable box or if you have some other older uh, non 1.3 uh, devices you may have to go in here and uh, set a delay for lip sync and uh, you'll see that you know the, if the voices don't match up with a lip, lip movement this is where we allow you to do that setting specifically for each one of the inputs in the left hand column there. Next we can drop down to trigger and if you notice the uh, uh, UMC1 has four triggers uh, right there and um, they're labeled here as amp 1, amp 2, music, and movie. Uh, and on the back, uh, you've got the same uh, labelings there on the uh, trigger outputs. So these would be useful if you'd like to have the amplifiers come on, maybe your surround sound amplifiers come on um, in, a, in the surround sound mode, and you only want um, your two-channel amp to come on for music mode or something like that. You can hook those uh, outputs up to the... Uh, inputs on, on the amplifiers so that they'll uh, either come on or not um, when you choose the Blu-ray input. So let's go ahead and uh, go over, select it, and as you hit select um, you can uh, actually turn each one on and off. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on the trigger for amp 1, and that's the one that I would hook up to my 7-channel amp, so that every time I chose the Blu-ray as a source, the amp would also come on. And then uh, the next um, choice we have on our input setup is the EQ mode. So we have uh, no EQ or any one of the uh, three manual EQ settings, which are set up in a different part of the menu structure. And that's it for setting up the Blu-ray input.